or with language because that's one thing for sure, two things for certain. I am so called rabbis, you know what I mean? Um, they learn, you know, when they go to the yeshivas how to speak it free. And they know how to go and dive and manipulate in the text. And there's one more thing that needs to be said because I've heard, you know, our good comrade, Brother Mikael from, you know, um, Hebrews in the Hood, break down, you know, I'm not using the term rabbi. And I tell you, as Hebrew Israelites, Taurus and the Israelites, they don't use the term rabbi. Because when you actually look at that word in Ivri and Moray Welkin, you know, he can even verify this. A lot of people think it means master. Because when you go into the Aramaic, you'll see Rab, you know, meaning master. But in all actuality in Hebrew, Rab doesn't mean master. It means much. So if you say Rabbi or Rabbi, you say it my much. They're yeah, not okay. saying master. Exactly. And what they did was because a person may have had much knowledge, you know, in the Talmudic thought, they said rabbi. But in all actuality, rabbi does not mean master. It means my much. We use words like moray, such as you have right here, Dr. Moray, you know, Joel, which is a teacher. You know, we might have used Kohen or Kohen, you know, or Masrach, you know, and the true ministers in the Hebrew culture, when you go into the history, where your Kohanim, those of the tribe of Lawaya or Levi, they're the ones that supposed to be, you know, the ministers to the people. So when people say about the word rabbi, now when you start dealing with the Hebrew grammar, you'll find out that that word don't even mean master. So this this right here alone shows that those that say they are the people of the book lack the language of the book. The people it's nowhere in the Tanakh where we call the, you know our teachers rabbis. Am I correct, more right? Absolutely. Okay. And there's one more thing that needs to be said, you know, and this correlates with the SOS conference, or if you're dealing with, you know, the synagogue, the same conference, when you study Judaism, it's only two ways to be a Jew. There's only two ways. You either have to convert to Judaism via halakha, or your mother has to be Jewish. If your mother isn't Jewish, then you're not Jew. You're not a Jew. This is what they teach. But throughout the Torah, all throughout the Tanakh, being determined as an Israelite is through the seed of your father. So if they're saying out their mouth that this is what determines what a Jew is through the mother, even when you look at the, 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 the genealogy, the root word for genealogy is gene. It's talking about the father's lineage. You see a lineage of father to son, father to son, all throughout when you read in Genesis 4, Genesis 5, all throughout the book of Chronicles. When you go to the first book of Chronicles, the first chapter, it gives you the genealogy of Adam, the tribes, Everything you understand, what I'm saying, going back to the patrilineal line. So, if they're saying matrilineal or matrilineal, if they trace their roots back via the mother, then they can't be the people of the book because the people of the book is determining the lineage through the father. And even if you go to some of the oldest Israelite tribes, you know, like the the Bene Manasseh, India. You go to the so-called Falashas, who is Beta Yisrael. You go to the Ebo, the Lumba. You go to different tribes throughout Africa and Asia. They all trace their lineage patrilineally. They didn't start tracing it through the mother until they was exposed and adopted Judaism. Then, you know, 
through the transfusion of culturalism changes. Then they start saying that yeah. it was through the mother. But Absolutely. prior to that, all the all the um all the um indigenous tribes of Israel was tracing it through the father. It, it might even be. Let, let me add this to that also is that when you look at the uh, patriarchal line, you know, or the paternal line, even in today's society, when people get married, you know, a majority not of the time, ninety percent of the time, ninety five percent of the time, what name are people taking? The father, okay, the Absolutely. husband. Absolutely. And guess what? Even if somebody does decide to take their mother's name, that ain't even the mother's name because guess who name she carries? Okay. Okay. And that's funny. And that's funny you went there, more, Dr. Moray, because, you know, I hear a lot of scholars within the Afrocentric world. And again, this is not an attack on, we got to keep emotions out of this. Because a lot of times when different brothers speak, and have their own opinions and commentary on knowledge. A lot of people on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram and Twitter, they take a lot of things personal and they start attacking people on the personal level. Let's keep the personal level away and that's deal with scholarship. When anybody see this, this is not personal. This is reality. So let's right. continue to build. I right. just want to say this I just want to say this part based on what Moray Yoel said, which is true about even if she does take the mother's name, it goes back to the father. Now when you speak of DNA, the argument is, you know, our lineage can be traced all the way back to mitochondrial Eve. But when you look at the YX chromosome in a man and the two X's in a woman, the Y naturally comes from the son's father. The X comes from the son's mother's father. So then when you go to the, the, you know, the female child, she gets an X from her father, and in turn, the female child gets the other X from her mother's father. So both XY and XX chromosomes go back to the fathers, absolutely, not to the mothers. Right. So this aligns once again with what I was saying earlier about tracing the lineage through the father, as well as what Moray Yoel just said, when you're speaking about even if you decide during marriage to take, you know, to take hold of the wife's last name, or if the wife chooses to keep her the name from her mother, in turn, it goes back to her yeah, father. Exactly. In my Hebrew, speak this, brother. We, we ready. I, I, I like breaking these down from a psychological standpoint. Here we go. Right? Peep this. In addition to what I just mentioned, right, this takes us back now to where a woman says, and, and let's make something clear. We as Hebrew Israelites are all for our queens. You know, we, we don't put our queens behind us. We put our queens on the side of us. And in fact, let's, let's even make that statement clear that we don't even call our women's ribs. We think that that is a derogatory statement. Because a woman is more significant than a rib. A woman is our whole side. And that is the Hebrew word zella that people uh, misinterpret for rib. It actually means side. So our women are more than a rib. They're our side. And we respect them. We admire them and everything. We're not them brothers that may be beating on a woman or putting a woman down, not caring and respecting a woman. We, high, we, we hold our queens to high standard and high regard. That's the only way we'd be able to stand as men is if our women are standing as queens. So let's get that out the way. Now, with that being said, when we go back to uh, the original, the, or, the origin of a woman, and help me out here, mighty Hebrew, because I'm about to throw, I'm about to throw you a fastball. You gotta hit it. All right. So here we go now. So now the concept that even if a woman decides to take uh, or, or give a, a, a man her name, that name still comes from a man. Now let's take the further now. Now this takes us back to the origin of a woman. And in our culture, we, te we teach that a woman came from what? Man. Exactly. And so that makes them both one. So we really don't do too much of that separation. And I can't wait to psychologically, as an Israelite community, uh, when we even have discussions about men and women, we never looking at it as men versus women. We start to look at it as... Man and 
And, and so that's the concept that we look at it as with our queens. But even with that being said, I'm about to throw the fastball. Please hit this ball in reference to even if people say that a, a woman takes a man's name, let's go back to the origin. Did a woman come from herself or did she come from the man that she's made from, which makes them one being? Dang, dang, absolutely. Stephanie, you know, when you look with that's 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 nice. Um when you look at the word Adam, we've been under the misconception that the word Adam means man. When that word man is not even an English word, the word man is a Sanskrit word that that goes back to the Sanskrit word menu, which means to think. When you break down the Hebrew word Adam means firstborn or first blood. The Aleph or the all in Hebrew means first in rank, or as in father, or the strength, you know what I mean, of the household. And then when you look at the Da or the Daleth in Hebrew, it's a door, you know what I'm saying? And then when you look at the mean, you understand what I'm saying? Now you're talking about the flow in the water, you understand what I'm saying? So when you put the Daleth or the mean together and get down, now you get what they call the blood of grapes flowing through the door or blood. So when you say Adam, now you say firstborn or first blood. Adam had both male and female principles. Right. As Zakar wa Niki ba. He had both, or the Adam had both of them. So in essence, Adam was more of an ecology. But once they split, you understand what I'm saying? Then now you have, you understand what I'm saying, what you would call, you know, um, um, Ish, Isha. You understand what I'm saying? Them two being equal, but equality doesn't mean sameness. Their roles are different. Their perspectives are different. So these, see, this is, this is why it's important to become a part of the mighty Hebrew University because when you become a part of the mighty Hebrew University and start, you know, getting into these semesters, you're going to get brilliant scholars, you know, such as, you know, Moray Yoel, Yisrael, you know, myself, you know, we, we got some up and coming, you know, teachers that's going to be coming out. We got modest daughters, you know, that, that know how to make garments and know how to, you know, bring women like Sister Tamar. She's such a modest daughter, a modest sister, a modest queen. You know what I mean? That knows how, you know, to bring the sisters, the younger generation sisters, into that mind state of being modest. So it's important that we come back to the original understanding, just like the brother said about that word red. And I'm going to say this, that wasn't to be taken as a shot to anybody. But that's just saying that the more and more we get closer to the Creator, the more and more our understanding is going to broaden back to its original source. The Hebrew word is the law. It doesn't mean red. You know, it means like Moray said, sigh. And when you go into the original, and I ain't talking about, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, Kabbalah as we know today, but the original. Symbolic meaning of that is the principle. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it, 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 let, let, let's hit him with this simple, this simple thing to help him understand that. And the men and women are married, and then one of them is by themselves in the street. Let's say you without your Isha. People are going to ask you, Where's your other what? Where's your other half? Where's your other half, right? Side is half. And then when you go to the book of Better Sheet, the second chapter, and we just giving people a little preview, which you're probably getting a lot of teaching. When you go to Better Sheet, which is Genesis, the second chapter, and the last two verses, it mentions that when a man leaves his mother and they join together, that they become one flesh. And they use the word Yakai Nakesh. And Yakai comes from the word unity. So if you bring a half and a half together, and I'm not the best person in math, but two halves equal a what? Oh, and that's the understanding of the one flesh. 
where man and woman come together and become one flesh. You can't bring something together to become one flesh if you don't have the equal, equal in a whole. The total equal in a whole. Mighty Hebrew more radio out. Just really quick, I wanted to list something out there. Now, I'm sure there's some people that probably thought the way that we conducted last night's interview should have been handled in a different way. But what we need the people to understand is specifically my part uh, and things that I'm involved with and you know trying to keep the platform open. And, and things like that so that we can have more of these discussions um you know I, I have a feeling people should have thought we asked some harder questions or you know some more specific questions so briefly l let me make this clear when it comes to dealing with um, you know uh, the rabbis and, and, and the Jewish people of today Trust and believe. I, I know what they say and how they feel uh, about Christ. I know they consider Mary the hairdresser and she had sex with many men. I know they say she played the harlot, you know, with, with carpenters. I I know they call, you know, uh, well, you know, me personally, I, I, I'm a, a messianic, believe, you know, brother believer, but I, I know they call, you know, Hamashiach. You know, I know they say that, you know, he's in hell being boiled in, in hot excrement. I, I know they say that he was sexually immoral and, and that he worshipped a brick. You know, I, I also, you know, th there's a lot of things, uh, you know, dealing with the Talmud and, and what they believe, you know, when it when it comes to, you know, the Messiah. And, and I specifically didn't take that there for a reason because one, you know, he has an upcoming debate, and and I'm sure that uh, he's saving some of the information. And you know, him having the debate uh, gives him an opportunity to you know shy away some from some questions. But uh, you know, yes, yes, I'm aware of you know uh, some of the the. Talmud and, and, and some of the stuff involved with that. Uh, no, no, I don't agree with it. You know, it's it's not anything that I, I'm involved with. So, uh, more Yoel, mighty Hebrew. Obviously, there's there's a lot of uh, of people that um, have a, a really deep investment in the way this debate plays out and and things like that. But I think most importantly that after this debate. We, we tried to lay the framework so after this debate if we still don't feel like we got a straight answer on any of these questions he would still maybe be willing to come back and have a discussion with us so so what would you two say as as far as the way that the uh, discussion in the interview played out last night the brothers I think that uh Speak on that first. Go ahead, Moray. Uh, Toda, I, 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 I think that it, it was, I think, man, that was a good platform, brother. I mean, you know, it, it was handled professionally. Um, I think that it was unbiased. And, you know, man, it, it's like, man, people really don't want to do interviews no more, man. And I, I think Hellraiser can really speak to this, man. Like, people don't want to do interviews no more, man. Even if you, if, sometimes, even if you ask them to do something positive. Because people will take the positive and even turn that into negativity, man. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, 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 it's like, you know, when we beat up each other on platforms, we actually chase people away and make them not want to come back, and there's no unity, you know. And so I think that we handled that platform last night, man, uh, really well, where we actually got as much as we could from the rabbi before he, you know, before his uh, lecture. And I think we treated him with respect like we should anybody. And, 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 you know, relationships, man, they built, man. And we never know who we, who you need. You never know who's resourceful. And, and so, man, we got to proceed with love, man, because like I said, man, that, that hate, it don't accomplish nothing, man. And so, you know, we, we could be knowledgeable of what people have done to us. We could be knowledgeable of our history, but then we can't dwell on that. You know what I mean? We have to use that to uh, fuel us to, to, to move better and to avoid that happening ever again. And, and so, with that being said, even the enemies 
know how to interact with their enemies. Man, <laughs> you know man, what I mean? That's that's that, that's facts though. That's fact. That's factual. That's factual. And see, you know why they want? Well, you know why they want to avoid certain things. Speak on it. They, they want to avoid it because mm -hmm. they're afraid the truth gonna come out. Exactly. So they want to, you know, they want to, they want to be comfortable around lies. In the atmosphere where there's no truth in it, they, 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 they're okay with that. They show up there on time. Yeah, and then you know we can always take it back to the old saying that my enemy's enemy is my best friend. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and what, 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 what's the scripture say? Am I die enemy because I tell you the truth? And um, that's what it comes down to. Okay. That's that's how you know who's who. Yeah, absolutely. And, right. and, and, and you know, let me add this too, man. When it comes to Rabbi uh, Rosenberg, if I can, if if if, if see, and because this is the psychological dilemma, man. Because people are dealing with color and culture barriers. It's like if I got if it's a white person and there's a black person, the black person is trying to do me harm. The white person is trying to help me. <laughs> you know, it, it's like because we are psychologically prone to adapt to our culture and embrace to what we're used to, we would actually put ourselves in danger rather than reach to the help. You know what I mean? And so my, my point in saying that is that uh, uh, if we, and I, I, met, I used this example yesterday about him, I don't know if I had listened to it, that even when Malcolm X came forth about the, uh, with the black, you know, and yeah, different ones that came forth, you know, about uh, uh, fighting for, you know, uh, uh, abolishing, you know, uh, or fighting for rights for us, and you had mm. you know, people come forth like this, like the Panther Party, and when people was asking the Panther Party, you know, basically, you know, what can we do? It was Caucasians asking, them, what can we do? You know, there were some Caucasians that actually sincerely went out and started a White Panther Party because Malcolm X, I mean, not Malcolm X, uh, 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 Brother Newton, basically told them, you know, hey, start your own movement, and that's what they did. So although we do have a percentage of those that we know are against us and that fight against us, we have to keep in mind also that there are those that, that love us and that, that are, are, want to see us thrive and want to help us. And we have to learn as an intelligent people how to discern between the two. You know, so if a brother is coming, no matter what his nationality is, and he's trying to help the forward progress of our people, I think it would be foolish and unintelligent not to embrace a person like that. I'm not saying to... Uh, be blind and to uh, uh, just bring in a, a, a snake or a something like that. And, and, you know, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is basically if somebody is sincerely offering help, it's only wise for us to uh, 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 extend a hand to that. And we have to remember as Hebrews now. Let's do some mm -hmm. And And I just, I just want to add something that, that you that, just... That has historians, he can tell you that as a nation of Hebrews, we've always associated with many nations. It's called globalization, brother. The United States wasn't the first one to globalize. We were globalizing as Hebrews, dealing with other nations, brother, that weren't even Hebrews. And we loved them. And we loved them. And, and we supported each other. And we lived in peace and harmony together. And they didn't serve the same God we served. And they didn't keep the same laws we, we, we did. But guess what you had? We had love and respect, and they were our allies. You see? And so we have to always set the example for the rest of the world. And that's why the Most High has called Israel to be a light into the nations. And we have to continue to be that light and let that light shine, even in the presence of our enemies, I keep. Even in the presence of our enemies. Kane, Kane. And you, you know what's you know it's, you know it's another problem. What is? There's a lot of sheep running with wolves. That's right. And they they're more comfortable with the wolf than they they are with the sheep. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna be honest. You know, as far as last night, you know, it could have played out several different ways, but you know, uh. Things were discussed and they were conducted the way they were conducted for a reason. I, I, I easily could have taken it into the town mood and you know saying that certain people are looked on, uh, you know, as Gentiles or animals and 
not humans, but, but beasts. I, I could have got into the, you know, sexual acts and sexual relations that are permitted in it. Uh, also some other things, some, some sexual indecency, where yet uh, that woman is still eligible or in, entitled to, you know, to, to marry a, a Jewish priest or a Jewish rabbi. So, you know, yeah, you th there's, a, there's a lot of stuff in there that I, I really I really just didn't feel like going there. That, that's my honest answer. I just didn't feel like taking it there. Um, yeah. Okay. Can the family hear me? Okay, okay. Um, I mean, like with what Moray was saying, you know, when you study the scripture, Israel is in fact, was and is in fact to be a light into the nations. And when you look at things, see, the thing is this, what's hurting our people and what's hard pressed is because when we look at our condition and getting back into this knowledge itself is used to be like, a lot of times we look psychologically through the eyes of a captive. We don't look at our world through the lens of a sovereign, independent people. So it's hard for us to align ourselves via treaty or treaties with other nations because we put such a doubt that we sometimes, you know, speak so much on revenge that we really don't look at the geopolitical position that our ancestors before us displayed inside the Tanakh, mainly in the books of Samuel, Kings, and Chronicles. And when you read these books, it shows you how our ancestors, certain kings, excuse me, made alliances with other nations. Like you got to know, Israel can't be living everywhere at one time. So you're going to have other nations living in certain areas, and there might be certain things that the landmass where they at may produce, whereas the, the landmass you in may not produce what is needed for you. So you have to deal with, excuse me, deal with trade. You know what I'm saying? But if we're constantly dealing in this situation, your mind, what's going to happen is we're going to go through certain psychological uh, phases. And, I'm, and, and in the book I'm working on now, On the Low, I speak about three psychological stages that a religio Israelite does versus a redemptive cultural nationalistic that the Israelite does. The religio Israelite, he goes through, you know, uh, uh, like if you want to say an awakening or more of an excitement that he or she discovered that they're Israel. And then the second phase, it goes through the feel-good motions, like one that would be involved in religion. And then the last is to shut down, because after a while, the feel-good is going to stop because it becomes so repetitious because you have explored this thought process with your old Christian mind state. And a lot of us on this, we're crossing, and when I say Christian, I don't mean Christian like we go to church. I mean Christian from being raised in this society. The Christianity is deeper than going to church. It's also cultural as well as religious, and it's social. So you don't have to go to church on a daily basis or deal in Christian ceremony, okay? But if you was born in this country, no matter what you do at home, socially, your ideas is Christian because 
Nine times out of ten, your children go into their schools. We learn in their ways, their ethics, their moralities, what's right, what's wrong to them, the way we eat, the way we wear our clothes, the way we marry. Everything is Christian socially. And then you got the redemptive nationalistic Israelite that resurrects in three ways. He resurrects with a dreadful awakening, meaning that you know person or shit form of knowledge in them called in the cave. Now the second portion is now being brave. Now you're establishing yourself, being brave, meaning now you are able to cross the threshold of westernization into Eastern thought. Because a lot of us in Israel, we are scared to death to cross over that line because we've been taught that's evil. You know, it's been a big thing going on, you know, when you look at a lot of these, you know, these phone conferences and blog talks about polygyny. That's our culture. But they have, you know, caused us to be afraid to deal with that. Look at the psychological effect briefly on that, and then I give you the third part, and I pass it to Moray or Hellraiser or you, Basel. We do not sit in any type of conference meeting to talk about the pros and cons of monogamy. You want to know why? Because even though we're Yisrael, even though we're Afrocentric, even though we're black power or whatever, psychologically that concept of monogamy is accepted amongst us. So we never have sit-ins about the pros and cons and the benefits of what's not beneficial in monogamy. But when it comes to polygyny, miscalled polygamy, okay, we have all the sit-downs in the world. Now, are we having sit-downs based on getting into this world? Or are we playing the devil's advocate or the slave master's puppet on this string to stop the process of our culture being brought back into its nature, you know what I mean, or our original nature? To say all that, to say, look how this society has us as Christian, even though we may be Israelite, even though we may be Muslim, even though we may be Pan-African, even though we may be Afrocentric, even though we may be Kamishi, whatever the case may be, they have a strong and third part of the resurrection of a redemptive Israelite is now the quicker. Now, it's like that movie you see in part three of the Matrix. Now you are able to really, really, really control your surroundings. The spiritual magna charter or carta has now transferred authority from one world or one realm to another. 12% of Hebrew Israelites that I know, the end of the world for us is not the end of this planet, but the end of a world system. There has to be a paradigm shift that's going to take place. And it's in our hands right now. The mighty Hebrew is not an individual no more. The mighty Hebrew is the mighty Hebrew. It's a group of Hebrew Israelite nationalists that they hold for to bring the Torah back to its constitutional social fullness. It is time to really be part of the shift. Not holy, because that's a pagan word from Helios, which is a sun deity. It is time for us to be a part so we can get ourselves together as a nation. Not to say that we can't get certain support on our own terms with other nations, but right now the focus has to be on us. You know, and I advise all camps. Now I'm about to say something 
that might be, you know, a little edgy. I advise all camps to now just say they just Yisrael. We just the children of Israel. We just Israelites. Just imagine we don't even have no more names of camps no more. We just all Israel. That right there will put fear. When we all come as Yisrael, you don't see it in Tanakh, the name of this camp, or that camp, or that camp, or this camp. Even when there was differences, we still was Yisrael. So this is where we need to start pushing. We need to start pushing like a nation, not like a group of religious fanatics. We have to come back as a nation. This is a nationality. This is not a religion. Okay? So I'm not saying that people are going to stop using their you know, names and their camps. But that is a part, you know, of our enslavement and our prolonging of that captivity. You know, because sometimes that causes separation. But when we all say Israel or Yasha Allah, then this mind again what we here to do. And as a matter of fact, you wasn't on the phone more radio well, you are on the um Google Hangout. Your your portfolio and your picture on the mighty it looked real nice, man. Did you see it yet? No, I, I ain't see it yet, man, but I, I ain't I ain't no handsome looking guy. So no, hopefully man, it, it, uh, hopefully it's your bio, bio some filters your and uh, bio, man, your bio like you know we like you know you know the show Pinky in the brain. Yeah, I remember that. You like the brain, man. Your 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 bio, man, is like is like a whole fuck, man. Yeah, I can uh I can cue part of that up towards the end, but uh. I can see that part. This yeah, bio. definitely. I wanna um. I wanna I wanna um before I get closing statements, I wanna thank. The one and only Hellraiser, Wu Tang Clan affiliate, Sons of Man member for coming through, spending some time with the family tonight, right. showing showing his support. Definitely more Ray or well. You know, stay stay tuned. We got some more coming. Got some more exclusive interviews. Uh we just working on on staying righteous. Mighty Hebrew's got a, a, a goal, he's got a mission. And he's got brothers that support him. And, uh, you know, there, we've got some more in store. You know, we touched on a lot tonight, but we, we not, we're not going to let it all out tonight. That That's for sure. More radio well. I appreciate everything you do, as always. And I just want, I just want to, to all, to all the non-believers out there, uh, you know, you want to know what Hamashiach Christ said about the synagogue of Satan and maybe you don't understand why that event was was named the way it's going to be named just just go check out Revelation 2 and 9 and then jump down to Revelation 3 and 9 and and you'll understand why and uh, you know there's a I, I have a good idea of what information I think that his brothers are going to speak on I'm definitely going to you know tune in and, and, and look forward to it I have an idea I, I believe I know which route they're going to go and some of the stuff they're, they're going to bring out. But, you know, we, we wish the best of luck on uh, them putting on that event. So, Hellraiser. Uh, I'm still here. Yeah, before before we close it out, Hellraiser, we're, we're going to have the mighty Hebrew take us out in prayer. But uh, is there you want to give out any of uh, your SoundCloud, any any of your links, your website, one um, more time before we get ready to shut it down, brother? Um, yeah, let me let me get that out. My SoundCloud is um, Hellraiser, R-A-Z-A-H, Music, M-U-S-I-C, Inc., Cloud. Hellraiser Music, Inc., Cloud. And, uh, and this is anything I have, have um, coming soon or out, Will be you know it's it's on it's advertised on there, and um, if you go to my website hellraiserdigital.com, it'll link you to all that my SoundCloud, my Reverb Nation, 
anything that's, that, that, that I have coming soon or anything that's, that's in, in action is, is going to show up there. And right. um, my YouTube is having Razor. All right. Well, with your permission, Razor, what I'm going to do is when this uh, live stream's over and it uploads, I'm going to include in the video description the link to your website because that sounds like that's the best way for the audience tuned in all over the world to follow anything that Razor's got going on. So I'll definitely include the link to that. We thank you. Look forward to some more interviews. I know you're working on getting a couple people to give some exclusive interviews and show their support mm -hmm. for, for what we got going on. But, uh, man, I appreciate it, and I thank you. More radio well, you want to give a closing statement, and then uh, as our you know our, our tradition over here, we'll, we'll turn it over to the tribal minister and let him take us out in prayer. Oh, I'm humble, man. I'm humble, man, because of this this – Something I've been asking for and it been answered, and uh, I'm humbled to 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 even to be in the presence of my brothers like this. You know, what I'm saying I'm glad to know that this 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 is still around on this planet. You know, uh, we appreciate you, and uh, you know, once once we end the live stream, Yoel, I mean, uh, Reza, you know, yourself, Yoel, myself, Mighty Hebrew, we we you know we can have a conversation off air amongst the brotherhood. I wanted to run something by you as far as the website. I forgot to ask a question, but yo, well, any closing statements? Uh, one last time. Okay. More Ray, more Ray on Facebook, Yazway. Websites, Yazway7.com, and I'll include that in the video description as well, but go ahead, yo, well. Okay, once again, giving all, all glory and honor to the Most High. And uh, definitely an honor and privilege to be on the platform with the family and to support my uh, my, my brother that I love dearly. And I'm uh, really proud of you, mighty Hebrew. And I'm going to tell you, man, like sometimes we just so used to putting each other down that it's, <laughs> that it's hard to put each other up, you know. And, and <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm, I'm really happy for my brother. In the psychological realm, you know, they have this saying, and I forgot which uh, philosopher uh, they uh, actually uh, uh, give uh, credit to the statement for. But psychologically, and I'm going to give you all something to think about. They say that it's hard to, for anybody to be happy for somebody if they feel like they can't accomplish what they have. And that's a, that was some research and a psychological uh, uh, um, observation that was done that led to that statement that they find that within human, within, uh, uh, within uh, sociology sometimes, is, uh, and as people socialize and interact, that people find it difficult to be happy for people that they feel like they couldn't accomplish what that person has. And whether that's true or not, you can investigate that in your own life. But I can say tonight that I'm truly happy uh, wholeheartedly for my brother, the mighty Hebrew. And it's about time that we continue to put each other in high standard and high regard. And I think that if we have anything negative to say about each other, we should be wondering why we don't have anything positive to offer them as a solution to the negativity that we're spreading about. You know what I mean? It's counterproductive. And so with that being said, I'm, I'm happy for my brother, the mighty Hebrew. And uh, he's one of the first uh, to come forth uh, in, 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 in response uh, to Egyptology and a lot of the brothers from Kemet. Uh, I know that uh, we give a lot of credit to uh, Nasi Yashavel because he did a lot in terms of uh, unifying um, the Messianics and a lot of our brotherhood. And he's doing a lot of stuff. A shout out to our brother. May the most I continue to bless and keep him. Uh, but prior to him, you had the mighty Hebrew that was actually uh, out there, and he was by himself. And so, you know, that said a lot to, uh, to be trying to uh, set a, a standard and to uh, uh, be on a, a battlefront, you know, without a team and, and, and solo. And so, you know, after he came home from college, you know, I made it my business to make sure that our brother get every support and everything that he needs to continue to thrive, to be successful, because the adversary, and we use the word Satan. The word Satan, in Hebrew, we use the word is uh, Shatan or Hashatan. Actually, we say Hashatan. Hashatan actually means an adversary. It means something that's adverse. 
And so there's different adversaries that have always come up against the righteous trying to do the right thing. So it's good when we can have positive brothers like our brother Basim, a Hellraiser, you know, and our ambassador who was on earlier and different other ones who are supporting the rise of us as a conscious people, us as Israelites, us as a cultural people, us as a minority of people who have been deprived and depressed and enslaved. And so it's about time that we have somebody that's willing to take a stand and, and to use their time to glorify the Most High and to help the people. And so this is something very really powerful that the mighty Hebrew has done. And he's surrounded by a good team, myself included, with by some and a, a number of other brothers. And so, you know, we, we – and you know what? Nobody mentioned Zion Lex. And I, I wanted to uh, mention his name real quick because uh, although uh, uh, Nasi um, Yashavel helped to bring uh, the conscious and messianic community uh, together for a cause, you know, you had that also uh, 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 backed up by Zion Lex, who actually was the one that bring forth Rabbi Rosenberg. And so, you know, uh, that was uh, something real strategic and genius on Zion Lex's behalf uh, to bring forth Rabbi Rosenberg. And so I definitely wanted to uh, mention that brother and may the most I continue to bless him and his righteous efforts to help our people with unity. Uh, I'm, I'm happy for the mighty Hebrew. I'm happy for the uh, Hebrew University people out there listening. I'm telling you, y'all going to love this. I'm telling you, this is the first of its kind. Uh, 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 we're working with a perfectionist, our brother by himself, uh, and this is going to be real, real, real powerful. Uh, continue to keep us in prayer and a mighty Hebrew in prayer, too, that the Most High will continue to allow us to be a light to the nation. And keep us strong, y'all, because if we get weak and we fall, yeah, that's going to make our enemies happy, but how is that helping the nation? So hopefully we can get the push, the support that we need as the mighty Hebrews and the mighty Hebrew can get it as well to continue holding up a standard and being that that that, that enzyme for the nation. And so uh, with that being said, again, all glory to the Most High and to it out for everybody in their efforts to help the mighty Hebrew University be to be a success. Uh, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, I'll be shut up right now and pass the bike back to you, by some, but this is beautiful, man, and uh, Toda again, a, a hell to heaven raiser, uh, aka, AKA uh, uh, a hell raiser for being uh, here. And the mighty Hebrew uh, invited other people to come, and some people probably got a little busy, but he knows a lot of people, influential to a lot of people. A lot of people uh, really appreciate all the work that he's doing and his efforts, and they would have been on tonight, but sometimes, you know, people are a little occupied, but I'm sure they're going to support this. And we hope that whoever's listening in will support this and understand that we're coming with a, a pure heart, sincere intentions, and a humble spirit. And we're not about trying to get a name. We're not out trying to get money. We're more or less trying to glorify the Most High, bring unity, and help our people with solutions. Shalom, 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 shalom. That's very, very powerful right there. Total yeah. robot, brother Yoel, that was powerful right there. So this is true. This is very true. Hallelujah. That was uh, well well spoken, well said, Morey. Well, before we turn it over to the tribal minister, got to give a big special shout out and thank you, the Seven Branch Designs, the good good brother Yaquan Yaquan hooked me up with the flyer. Anybody needs any kind of pr promo work, flyers, e flyers, anything like that, you can get a hold of me. You can look them up. Seven Branch Designs. The brother's been very, very helpful. And this uh, magnificent flyer you see tonight that I'm presenting to everybody with Hell Raise a Mighty Hebrew. Uh, this has been a Global Media Inc. production. Stay tuned. We've got more in store for you. Make sure you subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I got to give a couple quick shout outs and thank yous, and we're going to go out in prayer with the tribal minister. I got to give a big shout out to Brother Mikael from the walls of Jericho. I got to give a shout out to the boy G Con. G Con Radio is on Monday through Thursday night uh, every, every week on Blog Talk Radio, and that's G Consciousness Radio. G Con for short. He's going on air in 20 minutes. So after this live stream, if you don't got anything going on, tune in. Him and a couple of the brothers, Yahawada, uh, Yaakov, 
Mikael, Yeshai, a couple of those brothers are going to be on air in about 20 minutes. So big shout out to G-Con, Mikael, uh, the other Mikael, Yahawada, Yakum, all, all the brothers that were there from the very beginning. If I forgot any of y'all, I apologize. Um, but yeah, we're getting ready to go out in prayer, but we got love for the ones that got love for us and real recognized, real tribal minister. It's that time. Take us out and close in a prayer. Good brother. Hallelujah. 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 First and foremost, I give all praise and honor to Yah, the Holy One of Israel. I just want to say to that Rabbah, Yah, once again, before we close out for everything he has done for me and my Mishpaka, my family, you know, it's been this been a stony road. I know very well. He knows me very well. You know, he knows, you know, when I'm into something, whether it's good or bad, I can go to the extreme. You know what I'm saying? I just want the family to know that um uh, I have to stay focused. We have to stay focused. You know, we have turbulent times. You know, I know y'all seeing what's going on throughout the world, mainly the United States, which would be the central focus for us because we're over here. I just ask everybody to keep the eyes on the prize, and that prize is unification and an exodus. You know, we have we have a lot of great things that's coming up. You know, again, you know, I, I want to just give a shout out to all those that support the Mighty Hebrew. Also, give a shout out to my brother Zion Lex. I love you, man. Give a shout out to Chief Uziel as well from DCB. You know, um, to the special, you know, drummer. You know, she a famous drummer that we know. Um, Sister Raquel is right now from out the DC extension of the Kingdom of God. It's an honor, you know. Uh, you know, do the Shabbat with you and, you know, just having a good time with you, sister. You know, you're a blessing. Continue to preserve your life. You know, I'm just grateful. You know, you know, oh, also shout out to Dr. Boop and Yahuda, you know, herbologist, you know, last life. I mean, I can go on and on and on and on, but um, we got some, we got some nice things that's going to be coming. That's going to be beneficial to the nation, but I just want the nation to stay focused. And there only should be one thing we should be focusing on, and that's the belief in the land of great captivity. I've been saying this for years, and I'm just glad now people are starting to realize and recognize this is the time and the season to leave. I'm out in prayer. Hallelujah. 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 O oh, great and eternal King Yahweh, our Supreme Master, I ask you to bless over this panel as we leave from each other's presence. I ask you to bless over each and individual, each and every individual's family that's on this line. A real special prayer go out to Maria Wells, grandmother. I ask you to be with her and her family and to maintain you know, that situation there. For Yah, you are the hell of healers. We ask you, Yah, eternal one of Israel, to watch over all our loved ones, to bless all of, all of us near and far, to continue to guide us as we walk, to come from out of this captivity that we're in. We thank you, Yah, great eternal king, for everything you've done for us. For if it wasn't for you, Yah, we wouldn't be it where we at today. We've been through so much and we continue to walk in your path of righteousness, Yah. And I pray that my eyes will see the day that all Israel is unified with no more doctoral divisions, you know, hindering us as a people, even though we may have the differences, but the love for each other will surpass all that that we be able to unify as the most powerful nation on the earth in the days of old. Hallelujah. 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 Yah. 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 Yah.
All right, thank you. That was powerful, beautiful as always. On behalf of Hellraiser, the mighty Hebrew, Moray Yoel, myself, Basim, also known as BYK 1011. This has been a Global Media INC, Global Media Inc. production. Stay tuned, subscribe, check Razor the Mighty Hebrew on all their social media platforms. Go to themightyhebrew.com, sign up today. Also, check out yahsway7.com. Good night, God bless, stay blessed. Shalom. Shalom, shalom. Well.